Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be making a wooden crate and we're not using any add-ons. This is just straight vanilla blender and let's just get started. So if we select our crate here and we press tab, it by default has everything selected. If it doesn't, you can press A to select everything and we want to inset. So if we press I, uh, we will, we are turning on the inset tool. You'll notice nothing happens at first. If you look at the top of the screen right here, it shows individual off. We want to do individual faces. So if I press I again and then actually tap I, it will enable doing individual faces. So I'm going to do 0.2. So I want to take about 20% off the edge there. And then if I press hold alt and press E, I can turn on extrude faces along normals. So this will just extrude along the direction of the normals of the object. So we're just going to pull it in a bit. And we've already basically got the, the basic shape of our uh, crate here. All right, so next we need to add in the a cross beam is what I want to put. So I'm going to go to the Y face and then I'm going to tab. So I go out of edit mode, then press C so I can go into wireframe and see what I'm working with. And then shift A, mesh plane. So our plane is in here. If we press R and then press X and then 90, we will put, turn it on to the X axis. And now we can press tab to go into edit and then Press S and then X to scale it along the X axis. And then uh, from here, let's press Control R and we're going to put a loop cut in the center here. And then we are going to press A, R, Y. So we're going to rotate on the Y axis, then 45. All right, so now if we select our vertices here, go to uh, vertices selection, we just want these three. And I'm gonna drag it back just a little bit and then grab the center one and bring it to the top. So if you grab the three again down here, whoops, then press G. It doesn't matter if you go off to the left or the right. At the end of the day, when you bring these in here, if you have the vertices on each side touching, then you are going straight across. Grab the center one, bring it up here, bring it to the point there. And now we have the basic shape of our uh, crossbeam. So press Z to get out of Wireframe mode, select solid, then press A, so you've selected all of the vertices on that crossbeam, G, Y, and we're going to drag it out so we can actually see it and put it right at the edge there. And then if you press E to extrude, you give it some thickness, and now we have a crossbeam on one side. We would like to add this same crossbeam to the other side, so what we can do is, well, we have our crossbeam in edit mode here, add modifier, mirror, and we want to drag it across. So if we go hit this little eyedropper here, we can select our cube. And then if we select the Y, we're going to mirror across the Y axis across this object because we're selecting that we want to mirror across this object. All right, now we have our base geometry for our low poly crate here. Let's go ahead and move on to adding in some materials. So if we go up to UV editing here with our crate selected, make sure we have the actual crate. We can press A, U, and then we can do smart UV project. And I like to add a 0 0.001 here just to have a little bit of gap between the islands here that it creates. Uh, that way, if I'm doing texture painting or something like that, I don't cause an overlap and accidentally paint another part of the model. All right, now that we have that, we can go into shading. And it's already got a uh, material kind of created for us here. I'm going to pull things from textures.com. Uh, textures.com is a great website that lets you use uh, just these things for free. If uh, you have an account, you get like 10 free downloads a day. So I'm using the reclaimed wood wall texture here. And I've already got them downloaded down here. So I'm just going to drag those in. So here is my albedo. I can drag and select that. And you can already see that it pops up on here and it looks fairly decent. Uh, we, I would like to correct this because these are supposed to be two by fours that kind of frame out the box. And this looks weird. So we can fix that by going in back into UV editing and looking at the ones that have the issue. So I can select this and kind of have an unlit version of this. So if we go through and we press A, we can resize this and you can see it resize in kind of real time there and give us some room on the top. Does it hurt to make it a little bit bigger for this model? So if we find our the ones that are causing weird issues, so uh, switch to face selection. Select your face so you can see that this is going up and down. 
Well, we don't want that to happen, and we have some room at the top. So I can grab this, rotate 90 degrees, and then bring it up to the top. And I can do that for all of the ones that I have the issue with. And we can press select all just to line things up and kind of manually manipulate this UV. Just go ahead and grab all of the ones that are causing the issue and we'll rotate them all at once and then organize them after. I think that is it for all of the ones that are rotated weird. So first we can see all of these guys. So just rotate 90. I'll put them up. Where'd they go? Put them up over here. Something like that I think would work. So I think we have room down this side too. And same thing for these guys. Rotate 90. Grab this one. Rotate 90. Bring it up top. Some of these, though. If I hover over this and I press L, I can actually just select it that way as well. That way I don't have to fight with getting selecting the vertices. So I'll switch this to an edge selection. We're going to get that. There we go. And then L. Oh, I want to get all of these every time, apparently. So we can work with the ones that are left afterwards. This one I can grab, though. There we go. There we go. Yep, I'm going to get that every time. All right, so... Now if I just press A again, we can see that we are overlapping a little bit with these guys. So I can grab them and clean them up some more. And I'll fast forward through this part. Uh, I think you guys get the point. All right, got that fixed up to about how I want it. So now we can go back into shading and add in the rest of our maps here. So I'm going to use the albedo. We want to grab in our normal. And we want to shift a search type in normal map and insert a normal map here drag the color into the color drag the normal into the normal that's to get our normal map attached to this and then i'm going to use the roughness and i think that will do it let's actually let's break this roughness off should be more rough than that. There we go. Yeah. Let's not use the roughness. Let's just use the normal and the albedo. And we have a very basic right here. Let's get the crossbeam set up. So if we go over here, select a crossbeam, UV editing, A, U, smart UV project, same settings. And then go into shading, new, and then drag in our albedo and our normal. Go through the same steps on, as we did on the other one. Shift A, search, normal map, click, drag to the color, drag to the normal, turn our roughness all the way up. And we have our crossbeam, which is showing these all across. We don't want that. We want to go back to our UV editing. Up here, select our albedo. And then, oh, apparently I grabbed the wrong one. Go back to layout, make sure we have this guy selected. UV editing. And then now that we have all of these selected, if we press A, rotate 90, we can switch along this and we can scale this down and really just kind of work with it until we get the appearance that we want. 
which I think that looks pretty decent. And now we have a wooden crate. I want to take this one step further where and add in uh, some texture painting. So I'm going to put return to cinder on the side. And I just went to Photoshop and made a just something with a completely uh, transparent background that says return to cinder, just a nice stencil type font that kind of goes with it. And I saved that as a PNG. And I'm going to go into texture paint and uh, press in. And you can select the layer you want to do this on. We don't want to do it on the normal. We want to do it on the uh, albedo map. So now if I find the side that I want, so I'm going to do it with this side on the X axis. I'm going to go into, I need to press in again to get rid of that. I need to add in a texture. So press new on the texture properties, open, find your texture. Mine is called return to cinder. Okay. Now uh, it's popping up here because I already had it set. But if we go back up to draw, scroll down and you open up texture, you can switch this to whatever you want it to be. So we could have it being tiled and I could paint it a little like this, but we want to use stencil so we can place it exactly where we want it. So I've got this popping up here. If I right click and hold, I can move it around. If I right click and shift, I can change the size. I can uh, control click to rotate it. So I'm going to do like a nice rotation and something like, you know what? It'd make more sense for this to be on the top and not on the side. So we'll select on the Z axis and get it right where we want it. And I'm going to put it like right here. And then I'm just going to paint it on. And now if we go back to layout, you can see return to cinder on the top. That about does it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and uh, was able to teach you something. If uh, there's anything else in particular that you guys want me to make or any tutorials that you want me to make, please leave them in the comments and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.